table to partake of their morning meal. Walter waited rather impatiently till the blessing had been asked, then, with an en in entreating look at his mother, said, Mama, do you remember what you promised? Yes, my son, but be patient a little longer. I see your grandfather has something to say. Something that Walter will be glad to hear, I have no doubt. <laughs> he retarded. <laughs> He's just got some time to think of points. Remark to Mrs. Mr. Dinsmore, giving the child a kindly look and a smile. Captain Raymond and I have had a little chat over telephone this morning. He invites us all to join the Woodburn family in a sleigh ride. He is coming for us in Omnibus Lay. I can I ask you a question? Each and every one of you. Can I ask a question? Yes. Is this book about riding a sleigh? <laughs> I'm going to skip to the end. No, actually, it's about a robber breaking into a bank. It just... Zoe, Rosie and Walter uttered simultaneous explanation, exclamations of delight, while the others looked well pleased. Well, the others looked well pleased with the arrangement as well. They looked well pleased, mate. <laughs> At what hour are we to expect the captain? Asked Miss, Mrs. Dismore. About ten. And where <laughs> does he propose to take? Oh, and where does he propose to take us? Inquired Zoe. I presume wherever the ladies of the party decide that they would like to go. Surely, Papa, the gentleman should also have a voice in that, his daughter said, sending him in a bright, affectionate look from behind the coffee urn. <laughs> <laughs> Has she been relegated to the coffee urn? <laughs> She's just hiding it. <laughs> you at least, in the case in case the question is out of out, is out to a vote. Not I more than the rest of you, he returned pleasantly. But I have no doubt we would all enjoy the ride in many directions where the sleigh is good. <laughs> I think it will provide fine on all the roads, remarked Edward. Oh, Edward, you foolish fool. And I presume everybody would enjoy riding over to Fairview. The laurels and the oaks to call on our nearest relatives Perhaps the pines and the roselands also, to see the cousins there. That would be nice, said Zoe. Zoe's know that. <laughs> Suppose they'll be taking advantage of the slaying opportunity as well as ourselves. Those families may be driving over here to call on us. Then we must meet. Then when we meet, the question will be, who shall turn round and go back and keep on? Laughed Rosie. <laughs> But to avoid such an unpleasant state of affairs, we have only to ask and answer a few questions over the telephone," said Edward. Certainly, said his grandfather. Oh no. We'll attend to it first thing leaving the table. Everybody was- No! Eating. No! No, there's a red signal, no, I'm not going to stop in time, no. What happens if there's a red signal? <sighs> Game over. Really? Yeah. That's shit. It's not shit. If you just ran a red light, you'd hope if someone you, would be out if, there. If you got the zombie thing? No. Oh, you should have got the zombie thing. Anyway. Everybody was interested, and presently all were gathered about the telephone while Edward, acting as the spokesman of the party, called to first one and then another of the household nearly related to them. The answer I'm going to play an oil delivery. And it soon became evident that all were intending to avail themselves of the somewhat rare opportunity offered by the snow and ice-covered roads, none planning to stay at home to receive calls. They would all visit Ion if the ladies were likely to be in. Tell them, said Grandma Elsie, to take their drives this morning. Come to Ion in time for dinner and spend the rest of the day and evening here. I shall be much pleased to have them all day. All do so. The messages went the rounds. Everybody accepted the invitation and Elsie's orders for the day to both 
cook and housekeeper were given accordingly for preparation cook for their guests. Housekeeper. Guess. And the cook. What? They don't have actual names. It says, it says, um, and Elsie's orders f for the day to both cook and housekeeper. Oh, that works, I guess. Were given accordingly for preparations for the guests in Woodburn. The Woodburn party arrived in high spirits. A sleigh containing the Fairview family drove up at the same time. They had a room for one more and wanted Mama to occupy it, but the captain and V would only. V. I'm driving I... an ancient diesel thing. <laughs> it makes the best noise. It's like a constant fart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Shut up. I'm fucking. How many more? How much more of this chapter is there? Oh, we're almost at the end of chapter first. The two vehicles kept. Oh, fucking on miles. Uh. Evelyn and Lulu showed a strong desire to be together. Ooh. So, Evelyn was transferred to the Woodburn sleigh, and Zoe and Edward took the vacant seats in that from Fairview. The two vehicles kept near together, and their occupants, the children especially, were very merry and lively. Good for them. They talked of last year's holiday sports, and indulged in pleasing anticipation in regard to what might be in store for them in those, new, in those now drawing year Jesus near. Jesus Christ, this is a long train. We had a fun... We had a fine at the Oaks, didn't we, girls? Said Max, addressing Evelyn and Rosie. Yes, it was speeding, they replied. But I must say, a still better one at Woodburn. Where are you and Lou going to invite us again? Asked Rosie. When Papa gives permission, answered Max, sending a smiling persuasive glance at his father's direction. <laughs> it's quite possible that you may not have very long to wait for that, Max. Oh. Because you'll be dead. It's quite possible that you may not have very long to wait for that, Max! Came the kindly indulgent rejoiner. Rejoinder from the captain. It is Rosie's turn this year, remarked Grandma Elsie. Rosie's and Walter's and mine. They would like all of the young people for the connection of the connection, and as many of the old ones as we can make room for to come to Ion for the Christmas holidays. Or at least in the greater part of them, we will settle the particulars as of the time of the coming and the going and the later on. Captain, I would like you and Violet and all of your children for the whole time. This is going to be a long mission. <laughs> How many pages have I fucking read? One. Why has a bell gone off? What's going on? Why is there a bell I've noise? I've read eight pages. Who are several voices while all turn their heads to see for themselves? The Oaks and the Roseland folks, answered Max, as he spoke too large to... What's all this? Fucking hell. I will finish this chapter, it's boring as fuck, but I will finish it. <sighs> the wind had fallen, the cold was not intense, but they were so well protected against it by coats and robes of fur that they scarcely felt it. They found the ride so thoroughly enjoyable that they kept it up through the whole morning, managing their return so that Ion was reached only a few minutes before the dinner hour. Ion was a sort of headquarters for the entire family connection, and everybody seemed to feel perfectly at home. Is Ion the family Elsie estate? The most hospita hospitable hostess, and it was a very cheerful, jovial party that surrounded her well-spread table that day. After dinner, while the older people conversed together in the parlours, the younger ones wandered at will through the house. The girls were together in a small reception room, chatting about such matters as particularly interested them. Their studies, sports, plans for the purchase or making of Christmas gifts, and what they hoped or desired to receive. I want jewellery! <laughs> said, S Din oh. said Sidney Dinsmore. I'd rather have that than anything else. But it must be a han handsome, a diamond pin, or a ring, or earrings. Who's this? My ma says diamonds are quite unsuitable for young girls, says Rosie. So I prefer pearls, and I'm rather in hopes that she may give me a set for Christmas. Posh git. What was, what's the fish? 
I'd rather have diamonds anyhow. <laughs> Sydney. Said the retarded child. Sent her by a rich old aunt of ours. I'm sure it looks lovely on her finger and shows off the beauty of her hands. <laughs> shows off the beauty of her hand. She she has a very beautiful hand. Yes, I've been admiring it, says Lulu. Oh. I, I had not seen it before. Has no one seen this hand? Maud held out her hand with evident pride and satisfaction, while all of the others gathered round her for an eager close inspection of the new diamond ring. They all admired it greatly, and Maud seemed much gratified. Yes, she said. It <laughs> certainly is. A beauty, and Chess says it must be worth a good deal. The center stone is quite large, you see, and there are six others in the circle around it. I should think you feel very rich, remarked Lulu. I'd go fairly wild with delight if I had such a ring given me. Well then, why not give your father a little bit of a hint that you'd like such a Christmas gift from him? I've forgotten Sydney's voice. <laughs> I'm afraid it would cost too much, said Lulu. And I wouldn't want Papa to send me more, to spend more on me than he could well afford. <sighs> Why, he could afford it well enough, exclaimed Maud. Your father is very rich, worth his millions, I heard Cousin Horace say not long ago. <clears throat> and he must know, of course. Lulu looked much surprised. Papa never talks about how much money he has, she said. I never supposed it was more than enough to keep us comfortable, but millions means a great deal, doesn't it? I should say so indeed! More than your mind or mine can even grasp the idea of! Lulu's eyes sparkled. I'm ever so glad for you, I'm ever so glad for you, Papa, she said. He's just the right person to have a great deal of money, for he will be sure to make the very best use of it. And for the use or apart of a part of it, that will be diamonds for you, won't it? laughed Maud. I hope the captain will think so by the time she's grown up, remarked Rosie with a pleasant look at Lulu. Or sooner, if they come to be thought to be the suitable for girls of her age. Who am I talking about now? Nobody knows. Fuck's sake, I've missed the voices. That's nice of you, Rosie, Lulu said, flushing with pleasure, and I hope... Flushing with pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> And I hope you will get your pearls this Christmas, you dirty little whore. I join in both wishes, said Evelyn Leyland. I, I hope more. every one of you receive a Christmas gift. Quite to her liking. Thanks, but Gran. Those girls! Don't you think it would be nice to give a good time to some of the poor people about us? <laughs> what poor people? said Sydney. <laughs> what poor people? <laughs> Evelyn explained. Is it? There are those Jones children that live not too far from Woodburn. For instance! <laughs> Their mother's dead! And their father gets drunk and beats them and abuses them. I'm sure they are all together very, very full on. Oh, yes. It would be just splendid to give them a good time. Nice things to eat and to wear and toys, too. I'll talk to Papa about it and he'll tell us what to give them and how he's and how to give it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh. And there must be a number of... And there must be a number of other families in the neighbourhood, probably quite as poor as Forlorn, said Laura Howard. Who the fuck's Laura Howard? Oh, and I think it would be delightful to give them all together somewhere and to surprise them with a Christmas tree loaded with nice things. Let's do it, girls! We all have some pocket money, and we can get our fathers and mothers to tell us how to use it in the best advantage and how to manage the giving. I haven't a... I haven't a bit more pocket money than I need to buy the presents 
I risk to give to my own particular friends, objected Sydney the little shit. <sighs> Sydney the little shit. It's no. nice and right too, I think, to give tokens of love to our dear ones, Evelyn said. But we need not make them very expensive in order to give pleasure. <laughs> oh. Often they would prefer some simple thing that is... The work of our own hands. Jeez. <laughs> Therefore, we have something left for the poor and needy, whom the Bible teaches us we should care for and relieve to the best of our ability. Yes, oh. I dare say you are right, <laughs> said Sydney. But I shan't make any rash promises in regard to the matter. End of chapter first! This is an awful uh, book. We got, I've decided from now on, we're going to record the first chapter of every book we choose. We're going to read them. We're going to decide whether it's a good book. Is it a good book? No. Fucking correct. This book is awful. It doesn't even. I, I don't even know what this book's about now. No one does. <laughs> I think we should record another one while we're at it. I don't have any books around. I'll find one. I've got like. No one. I see a book. Oh, you're going to read one, are you? I thought this was my thing. You're doing the Wikipedia readings. I found a book. It's the Longman English <laughs> Chinese Dictionary of Common Errors. <laughs> We're not reading that. <laughs> I can't even read it. Half of it's in, See you next time, in Chinese. <laughs>